Welcome to P.L. Wooden Exposed. I'm Patrick L. Wooden Sr., the pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and I'm glad that you've joined me today. You know, these are extremely exciting times, my friends, and I am grateful to be a born-again believer in a day like today. And I thank you for visiting the website, and I pray that you will uh, listen to what I have to say today and stay engaged and uh, uh, hear with your, your spiritual ears and uh, watch with your spiritual eyes because I have something I want to talk to you about. As you know, uh, the marriage amendment, the, the definition of marriage uh, has been deemed or ruled by an unelected Obama-appointed judge as being unconstitutional. In 2012, we went to the polls and 60% of the voting public voted in favor of the marriage amendment. What that means is 500,000 more North Carolinians were in favor of the amendment than was against the amendment. The amendment simply reads as follows. Marriage between one man and one woman is the only domestic legal union that shall be valid or recognized in this state. This section does not prohibit a private party from entering into contracts with another private party nor does this section prohibit courts from adjudicating the rights of private parties pursuant to such contracts. Basically, what this amendment uh, states, and it says, and it was um, uh, entered and made a part of our Constitution, that the legal definition of marriage will be that of one man and one woman. Now, those who oppose uh, this amendment said that the amendment would uh, affect women's domestic uh, protection, uh, that uh, if a guy beat up a girl and, and if they were not married, if this amendment passed, then the police would not come to the woman's rescue. Or if children lived in a home where two persons were living together and they were not married, or if the children were, were living together and it was a homosexual couple or, or a lesbian couple, and they were receiving uh, a government assistance, that their assistance would be cut off. These were lies that were told, and since the amendment passed, there has, there has not been one instance where a female has been assaulted, and they called for protections, they called 911, and they asked the police to come and protect them, and the police said, we can't come because of the marriage amendment. Or there's not, there haven't been one instance where a, a child that was in a home uh, that had uh, uh, a same-sex uh, couple uh, uh, as parents uh, in that home um, where they lost their welfare or their food, or, or there's, not, there's not been one instance where any um, uh, homosexual persons lost their insurance protections. All of these uh, lies were told on the amendment, but uh, the people of North Carolina saw through it. The people of North Carolina voted, and we made our voices heard. Well, one unelected official has overturned the wishes of 61% of the voting public that participated on that day. Now, the question is, what are we going to do and where do we go from here? And that there are those who are fighting to, to take this all the way to the Supreme Court. And most certainly we support them and we will do everything that we can to assist in that. But I'm here to say to you, my friends, man can make it legal, but man cannot make it right. The biblical definition of, of marriage, the definition that the God of the Bible uh, has given, has not changed. Our Lord in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, when talking about marriage, he said that did not God make them male and make them female? And uh, he says, what God have put together, let not man put asunder. What the Lord was referencing was the institution itself. The God of the Bible put together the, the marriage institution and in every instance of marriage in the Bible, in every instance, it is opposite sex. Even when there was polygamy, it's still opposite sex. 
There's not one instance in the Bible where the Bible sanctioned uh, the union between uh, uh, two persons of the same sex. Yours truly have been uh, uh, in the news. Uh, several news outlets have sought my opinion and comments concerning uh, what has taken place. And uh, uh, I have uh, spoken my heart and hopefully I have uh, spoken uh, the truth. Well, I know that I've spoken the truth. My goal was to speak the truth in love, as the scripture says. But I found out that uh, uh, love today means agreeing with the homosexual agenda, no matter what it is. And if you disagree in any way, uh, you are spreading hate and you're, you're, being, uh, you're accused of being homophobic. And I have in my hand a letter that was written to me that I want to address to kind of give you some insight into the thinking of, of, of persons who are, or some people who are in favor of same-sex marriage, which, uh, as I speak, is now legal in the state of North Carolina. But again, they can make it legal, but they can't make it right. Abortion is legal in our state, but my friends, there is not one scripture there's no, there's not one scripture in the Bible that justifies the shedding of innocent blood. And oh, when we stand before God and give an account on the day of judgment, I want to stand before God and be able to say that I did everything that I could, Lord, to save the unborn because the unborn are people also. God knew Jeremiah before he was even born. He says, when you were in the womb, I formed you and called you and ordained you to be a prophet. So the Lord is concerned about the unborn. I actually believe that the unborn are the very least of these. And the Lord says, if you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. I thank God that the Lord has given the upper room ministry a task, a challenge to be a voice for the unborn and to be a voice for the institution of marriage. But let me get to this letter that was, uh, was sent to me and I will uh, respond by the time you see this, I will have responded to the gentleman who sent the letter to me. I will not read uh, uh, his name because I, I'm assuming uh, that privacy uh, was expected and I will respect that. But let me read this letter to you. Uh, it says to, to me, it's from, and I won't give his name, and it says the message, Mr. Patrick Wooden. I am appalled that a supposed man of God, man of the cloth, would condemn, quote, God's people, end of quote, and want to deny them the right to marry in a civil ceremony, no less. He goes on to say, he uses a word that I never use to describe homosexuals. He says gay people, and the reason I, does, I do not, is that gay uh, means happy, upbeat, and socially accepted. And uh, gay uh, is a euphemism uh, to describe uh, the homosexual uh, lifestyle in the homosexual community. People say that we shouldn't use terms like faggot because that is a derogative term. Well, if I will not use a despotism, which I do not believe that the word faggot or homosexual uh, is. Uh, a faggot, by definition, is, is a bundle of dead sticks tied together that will not uh, germinate. I personally think that it is, it is an appropriate metaphor because no matter how many times people of the same sex come together, they will not germinate. Um, but if I'm not going to use uh, what that which is considered as a slur or a despotism to describe the homosexual community, I certainly will not use a euphemism to describe the homosexual community, which is the word gay. And my friends, I want to tell you, when you're in a PR battle, here's what people understand in public relations. He who controls the, the rhetoric more often than not wins the war. You cannot win a war allowing your opponent to dictate the terms. And so gay is uh, the word that they adopted to describe uh, that lifestyle. I will use the word homosexual. But, but to read his letter, his letter says, gay people are not asking for religious groups to marry them. Well, they're not asking for it today. We'll see how long that lasts. His letter goes on to say, after your race have been persecuted, killed, maimed, 
and denied basic human rights, you dare to want these rights denied for same-sex loving partners. Perhaps you would prefer to have the civil rights of African Americans return to their former state in the cotton fields picking tobacco or to have African Americans put on a slave ship and sent back to Africa. Now, my friends, before I even uh, address uh, the lunacy of this, I, I want to first of all say that uh, I am, I do not advocate having any rights withheld from homosexuals uh, or, or anyone else. Uh, I just don't think that marriage should be redefined. I've never read anywhere uh, in the Constitution or anywhere where uh, persons of the same sex have a right to marry. Um, you have to read that into the Constitution. You have to find words that are not there to assume that people of the same sex have the right to we use the word right as he, as he used, right to marry. What document gives persons of the same sex the right to marry? What religion uh, gives people of the same sex the right to marry? What ancient book, uh, what set of laws uh, give people of the same sex the right to marry? What tradition uh, historically has given people of the same sex the right? To marry. I say that those who view the Constitution as a living, breathing document, that's a fancy legal term, a legal way of saying we read into it whatever we want to. Uh, that's where they get this so-called right. But I'm not uh, for, nor have I ever said that I'm for uh, homosexuals to be denied basic human rights or to be put in a cotton field, or to be attacked, or to be assaulted, or to be put placed in uh, slave ships. As a matter of fact, in our society, uh, homosexuals uh, do quite well. Uh, and I'm not against people getting jobs or, or anything like that. So I don't understand uh, why the writer has to go to uh, an extreme. He says, same-sex marriage is a civil rights issue, much like um, that endured by your race. One would think that with that history in your heritage, that you and all African Americans would understand oppression and civil rights denial better than most groups. Yet, your televised comments this week only perpetuate the injustice, oppression, and denial of rights that your race fought so hard to achieve. Now, I don't know what I said that would uh, perpetuate the injustice, uh, oppression, and the, the denial of rights of African Americans. I said, and I still say, I agree with the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible defined marriage as a union between a man and a woman. And the last time I checked, the Bible is right. I agree with God. I am not for homosexuals being assaulted. I'm a not, I am not for homosexuals being beat up or any such thing. I'm, I'm not for homosexuals being put on slave ships or dogs having been uh, uh, sicked on them. Uh, I, I was against, uh, uh, it, it, uh, I was, it was appalling what Bull Connor and others did, for Af did to African Americans based on the color of our skin. And it would be appalling for someone to do the same thing based on someone's sexual preference. But let me say, it is an insult, uh, writer, uh, to me and hopefully to all thinking African Americans, that you would compare the deviant, unhealthy, ungodly, unnatural sexual behavior of the homosexual community to the beautiful, lovely, God-made, uh, God-shaped color of African Americans. The country was wrong to discriminate uh, 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 against African Americans on the basis of skin color. West, the West African nations were wrong 
to sell uh, uh, their um, um, people, those who have been captured in war. They were wrong to sell their own into slavery and the white slave uh, traders were wrong to buy slaves. It was wrong, it was immoral, it was ungodly, it was an unspeakable wickedness and evil that took place. It was a scourge, and yes, it is a scourge on the history of this great nation of all ours. That's why we put an end to it. That's why we stopped it. That's why it was outlawed. That's why it was overturned. That's why uh, blood was shed to end it. White blood, black blood, in the civil rights, people fought, in the civil war, excuse me, people fought on both sides, white against white, white against black. People fought to end this. It was wickedness. Yes, and the revolution in the 60s, thank God that it took place. Oh my, unspeakable wickedness was done to African Americans uh, in the South. But not only were African Americans uh, mistreated and, 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 and the Klan riding through our neighborhood, who by the way were Democrats and was terrorizing the neighborhood and lynching African Americans and killing people, uh, Jews and, 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 and whites and blacks died to bring these evil practices to an end and it was wrong and the last time I checked uh, no one has ever um, or the majority of people there's never been a group riding through a community of persons and putting crosses in the yards of people who are homosexual and burning crosses and lynching homosexuals and, 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 and killing people due to their um, sexual preference. It is an insult to compare my wonderful skin color to immoral, deviant, sexual behavior. There has never been anything wrong with my skin color. There is nothing inherently evil about uh, being African American. There are some bad apples in the African American community just as there are in any and every community. But there is nothing inherently evil about being African American. There's nothing deviant about being African American. There's nothing wrong uh, with being a person of color. There are born again, spirit filled, God loving, law abiding African Americans. But I'll say to you, there is no right way to practice homosexuality. There is no moral way to be a homosexual. There is no godly way to be a lesbian. There, there are no scriptures that, uh, 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 that justify or support homosexual behavior. As a matter of fact, my friends, you know, I hear the argument all the time about, well, what about those laws that prohibited people who are of different uh, races from marrying? Those laws were wrong. And they certainly uh, did not have biblical sanctions. You sanctioning. You remember when the people of Israel got mad with Moses because Moses married an Ethiopian woman. <laughs> and listen, they weren't upset because they felt that Moses married down. They were upset because Moses married up. My friends, all in the Old Testament, if the truth be told, everybody was brown. Everyone was of color. Everyone was of a darker hue. It's been proven. And so uh, the Bible never sanctioned. The Bible never sanctioned uh, d dividing people on the basis of race. When God warned the children of Israel against marrying people uh, uh, in the land of Canaan, it wasn't because of color. It was because of culture. The warning was they would turn you against, they would turn your sons and daughters against me. They would turn your sons and daughters against uh, the God of their forefathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you go into the land, beware of their customs and do not practice their customs. But it was never on the basis of skin color. Well, let me finish reading this letter. He goes on to say, don't start quoting the Bible to prove your point. 
The Bible is full of lies, he writes. Mistruths and fallacies. It is not written by God or Jesus, but by common men of the times, uh, of the times well after Jesus died. It's time to get off your throne and stop being a self-righteous hypocrite. Well, one thing we do know is that the writer does not submit to biblical authority and that his opinion and my opinion of the Bible could not differ more. Because, my friends, I believe that the Bible is the only uh, written, infallible, inspired, written word of God. I believe that the Bible is the greatest love letter that God ever wrote. I believe that the Bible is the revelation of the God of the Bible. And in the Bible, we find the truth about God and the truth of God. I find not one fallacy in the Bible. What mistakes are, is he talking about? The Bible is the word of God. It is the Judeo-Christian concept found in the Bible that the, that the foundation of our entire judicial system uh, is, uh, is on. So uh, I see this man's problem. He doesn't submit to biblical authority. Now, I do. And, and I see things through a, a biblical worldview. He obviously doesn't. And he says this. Uh, incidentally, I am a retired, I am a retired teacher with 43 years of experience. The only dark cloud over North Carolina is you. And of course, these redneck Republicans. Now, I wonder, uh, is, um, is he calling all Republicans redneck? <laughs> uh, that won't same sex, that want to ban same sex marriage. So, uh, are, they, uh, are, they red, uh, are they rednecks because they want to ban same-sex marriage? And um, uh, uh, by the way, same-sex marriage is, uh, is a tremendous oxymoron. And an oxymoron is when two things that don't go together are put together, like sweet and sour or, or, or day, night, or the, the, the deafening silence. Let's add to it, same-sex marriage. Um, I did say that when the marriage amendment was overturned by one unelected official, that it placed a dark cloud over our great state, and it does. And it shall, the dark cloud, cloud will remain. Um, and I don't apologize for that. Um, as, as far as his remark about uh, redneck Republicans, I, I, I would agree. I, I, I would imagine that there are some rednecks in the Republican Party, but brother, don't fool yourself. There are rednecks in the Democrat Party also. Uh, I would imagine there are rednecks in society, uh, just as there are, there are bad people everywhere. Um, and uh, he called me a self-righteous hypocrite. Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably there are times when I've been that, but I'm not one when it, when it comes to agreeing with God and standing on the word of God. And I'm, I'm just like Job. Job said, Lord, that which I see not, teach thou me. And if I've done iniquity, I will do no more. But the position I take and hold is not based on my own righteousness. It's not based on my own ability to be perfect or imperfect. I'm a human being like everyone else. But it's based on the Word of God. And the Bible, my friend, is right. Thank you. Every day, Across America. Excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org.